Hello there everyone, and welcome to a Breath of the Wild location ranking. Of the 16 locations in Breath of the Wild, which is the best? If you're wondering, the locations are separated by the tower's boundaries, also including Hyrule Castle. Not including the five divine beasts, because they aren't distinct enough to really rank. But I put them about 13 or 14 if I were. The list of the 16 areas should be on screen right now, but before we get to that, if you like content like this, such as rankings and more not Let's Plays, any, any, really anything would be greatly appreciated. I plan on doing more stuff like this, so stay tuned. But further ado, in last place is the Gerudo region. You may be thinking, wait, isn't that the region the Gerudo live in? The cool desert in home of the Iga? No. The Gerudo region is possibly the most boring area in the game. There is nothing here aside from the 8th heroine statue, its sword, and a lionel. The only reason to go there is to find some shrines or a few Koroks. In 15, it's the Ridgeland region. Another kind of boring region. It's better than the la last, most because Satori Mountain and Thunder Plateau exist. But aside from those two locations, this place serves mostly as a way to get to Tabantha region. The frequent rain, rain here also does not help. Also, the mushrooms are kind of funny looking. Coming in at number 14, the lake region is up. This region also doesn't have a main prominent area that isn't the giant lake. The Day of Village Ruins and Taobab Grasslands are the most notable area, but the lake itself is not too interesting. It's just a really big body of water with a really big bridge in it. Number 13 is the Woodland region, with its mismatch of random stuff. You have the Typhlo Ruins, where you in internal darkness, the Ruined Temple, home of many guardians, the military training grounds, where the tower is located, and most notably, the Lost Woods. It's full of random stuff, and none are bad. Aside from these landmarks, it's only hills, and not really much to do there. Number 12 is the Laneru region which ironically does not contain Mount Mulneru. This is the home of the Zora and my second favorite divine beast, Varuta. The Zora's domain looks pretty cool, but the region has a ton of cliffs and tons of rain, making it impossible to get around. I guess the wetlands also exist, but there isn't really much to them. At 11 is the Elden region, where the Gorons live. Not a bad region, the fire is pretty cool, pun intended. But aside from Guan City and the minecarts, you run out of stuff to do here pretty quickly, and the lava is super annoying to get around. The main reason to come back here is to get gemstones for rupee farming. At 10, we have the Heba region. It suffers the same stuff that Death Mountain does, except this place has snowboarding. I wish it wasn't always blizzarding here, because in the rare occasions where it's clear, you get an amazing view of Hyrule, and even the Northern Lights. Except for that, another fairly plain area, although the Leviathan bones definitely step it up a notch. In 9th, the Tabantha region is up next. The home of Dorito and Bread is a very nice one, with interesting cliffs and one of the best villages in the game, and a big canyon with golf in it. The village is definitely a highlight, but aside from that, it's a pretty decent area to explore. Lots of cool stuff to find, like monster camps. In 8th, the West Nakluda, home of Kakariko Village, the first fairy fountain, and one of the coolest mountain ranges ever. This is the bad half of Nakluda, but it still has quite a lot to do, like taming a horse, visiting the stable, or going to the Guardian Battle Ruins of Fort Heitano, where Link nearly died a hundred years ago. In 7th, we got the Central Region, the heart of Hyrule and the hardest to explore area. It's infested with guardians, so you'd better pack those ancient arrows. Its main landmarks are the Colosseum, the weird pond area I forgot the name of, and Hyrule Castle. I wish some, there was some more stuff here, because it is a bit flat, but there are many ruins to explore, so that makes up for it. It's also where a majority of the DLC armor is located, which is a nice bonus. In number six, the Great Plateau arrives. The tutorial area of this game is possibly the best tutorial in any game I've played. The fact that you don't have to paraglide at first makes you really think on your feet, and you can't fly over everything like you can later. 
The only downside is there's no reason to come back here after you've gone all the Koroks. The loot here is not nearly as good as other places. Aside from that, it's a really great tutorial. I kind of wish you could skip it on subsequent playthroughs, though. In 5th, East Nakluda, the location of Hateno Village, Mount Laneru, Spider-Nest Mountain, and Okul's Naval, and a chunk of the sea. The main draw is Hateno Village, the most notable village in the game, as has Link's House, the Dye Shop, and the Hateno Tech Lab. Mount Laneru also has a boss fight against the corrupted Nadra. Overall, a nice, calm area with some pretty cool locations to visit. In fourth is the Ferron region. This rainforest is a huge jungle south of Nakluda, full of waterfalls, cliffs, and water in general. A very wet area. Lurlin Village is also located here, a small fishing village that sadly has almost nothing to do with. It has like three side quests, one shrine quest, and a way to get gambling addiction. Daisy Dragon Farming is also pretty nice. The only major downside is that the fact that it's almost always raining. And there are tons of cliffs, but if you have the Zora armor, you can just swim up the waterfalls. Getting the bronze medal is the Wasteland region. The actual home of the Grio. For some weird reason, I like desert areas, and the Wasteland region is almost perfect. Multiple landmark locations include the Kar Kar Bazaar, Gerudo Town, the Yiga Clan Hideout, the Southern w Lookout, the Southern Oasis, and the South Leviathan Skeleton, as well as the Seven Heroines. Almost everything there is an interesting half-buried ruin, monster camp, or random treasure hunter. Look at you, Tracy. The Maldukas are also my favorite music track in the game. The only issue is that a few areas can be flat or barren, but even then there's usually something to find. Just shy of first is the Akala region. It's the most stunning region in terms of looks, being an eternal autumn that looks amazing at sunset. It's also the place where the most well-known side quest in the game is. From the ground up, this quest creates Terry Town, which has many useful items you can buy. The Akala Tech Lab also has some of the best equipment in the game. Skull Lake, where you first meet Kilton. The Akala Citadel, where Hyrule Army officially fell 100 years ago. And the Spring of Power at the heart of the region. Overall, an amazing region that is never to go bad to go through on your motorcycle. It also reminds me of Autumn Mountain from Paper Mario the Origami King. And finally, in first, is Hyrule Castle, the only true dungeon in the game. This is easily the area of the game I go back to the most, just to explore and find passageways that I have not found. There are so many ways to enter and get to the top. You can go through the beaten path, through the front doors, the side entrances, through the dungeons, and many more. The loot available here is also amazing, being the only area to have the Royal Guards equipment. To even add to the fact that this is Ganon's stronghold now, only the strongest of monsters can be found here. No lowly bacoblins, only black, silver, and gold models in Lizalfos. There are even two Lionels that you can fight on the main path, with a Stalinox guard, a Hylian shield, and a Talus blocking an entrance. This place is crawling with guardians. This is the final area, and the game lets you know it. The closer you get to Ganon, the redder the sky becomes. The final fight against Ganon may be hair disappointing, but nonetheless, it is an amazing climax to an amazing game. Anyways, that is it for this video. Like, comment, and subscribe if you want more. See you next time. At fourth, we have the Ferron region. The rainforest... The rainforest sound of new... What the hell? Just shy of first is the Akala region. Easily the most stunning region in terms of look, with... Ugh.